Birmingham feels unloved and overlooked, and it's experiencing an identity crisis. It's a city with 1.1 million people from 187 different countries. So it doesn't mean much these days to be a Brummie. What, what does you mean by a Brummie? Somebody who lives in Birmingham and comes from Birmingham? Brummie? Brummie. Brummie, no, no, never heard of it. <laughs> well, I'm not a Brummie. How long have you lived here? Oh, hang on, hang on. About 67 years. So you lived here 67 years, but you don't consider yourself a Brummie? Oh, no, of course I don't. At what point do you think you become one? I won't. Do you think of yourself as a Brummie? Do you know, have you heard the word Brummy? No. Never heard the word Brummy? No. Use, it's, de, it's a way of describing somebody who's from Birmingham. I don't know. But you live here? Yeah. How long have you lived here? Uh, long time. The report was published this afternoon. It's more than just corporate navel-gazing on an epic scale. It says authorities have spent too much time dealing with self-appointed community leaders and self-interest groups and that's left some groups alienated, including the people most likely to call themselves Brummies, the white working classes, as well as more recent immigrants. The report's author is the Labour councillor Wazim Zafar. Some of the refugee communities felt they were invisible. But we also need to look at how we engage the white working class communities that have shaped the way Birmingham is today. So it's important that we sit down and engage with them and address some of the inequalities that they face in society. Uh, I think far too often we look at particular ethnic groups. Uh, I would like to see more work done on neighbourhood level, on ward level, on district level, on constituency level and on city level rather than look, focusing on particular ethnic groups. This is the Soho Road in Hansworth where Polish shops, Jamaican restaurants, mosques churches and gudwaras all sit side by side. Dr Jenny Fillimore, who's the Director of Research into Super Diversity at the University of Birmingham, says it's hard to give so many people one single sense of identity. This is a challenge that's facing the whole of the developed world. It isn't just a Birmingham challenge. And I can't say at the moment that I can point to any particularly um, wonderful examples where it's happening. Um, there are signs in places like Handsworth, you know, that people do come together, um, but possibly more at street level. The report recommends introducing a Brummie History Week in schools, appointing Brummie ambassadors, and also giving a welcome pack to new immigrants. Look at that. Variety of pens. In one of the city's hidden gems, the Pen Museum, in the Jewellery Quarter, I met one of Birmingham's most ardent advocates, Professor Carl Chin. I think we've got to stop pandering to ignorance and prejudice. We've got to stop replying every time there's a pathetic survey that says the Brummie accent is regarded as the worst of the world. Secondly, we've got to celebrate who we are, and that's why I think a Birmingham History Week will be important, because it will show us celebrating. Yes, we are self-deprecating. We knock ourselves first before anybody else knocks us. So we need to reach out further afield from Birmingham, but we also need to do it in a way that isn't apologising for what we are, and who we are, but say, this is who we are. This is what we've done for this country. We don't expect special treatment, but we're no longer going to stand for being put down. Brummies are still defined as being hardworking, creative and self-deprecating. And it's hoped that this report will bring the changes to help the city rebuild its self-confidence. Phil Mackey reporting. Later in the programme, we'll take you back to our Burns Night 